Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are whipping up a gorgeous moisturizing repair cream. It is wonderful for dry skin, especially in these dark, cold, dry winter days. So this cream was inspired by a product made by La Roche-Posay, and last week I actually shared a ingredient analysis video on it. So if you want more discussion of the ingredients in this formulation, I really recommend giving that video a watch. The thing I find really special about this lotion is that it contains 30% vegetable glycerin, which is a lot of vegetable glycerin, but I find it creates an absolutely gorgeous, really moisturizing lotion, and I really have La Roche-Posay to thank for sort of inspiring me to try that much vegetable glycerin in something. In addition to a hefty dose of vegetable glycerin, you'll also find some great emollients in here. There's some shea butter, some cetyryl alcohol, which also gives some gorgeous body to the lotion, and there is some dimethicone 350, which helps detackify the lotion since that much glycerin can be a little sticky. Now I am sharing two slightly different variations on this cream. The version we're making here on YouTube uses polo wax as our emulsifying wax, which is one that we've used many times before and you're probably familiar with if you have seen some of my other lotion making videos. The version of this formulation I am sharing on the blog uses glycerol stearate SE as our emulsifier. This is an emulsifier I have never used on the blog or here on YouTube before, so I figured I would share two different versions of the formulation, one using the emulsifier that was used in the product that inspired this formulation, and then one using an emulsifier I think you're more likely to already have. Both versions of the finished product are absolutely lovely, so feel free to make whichever one appeals to you or make them both and compare them see what you think. I think that's about it for preamble though. Please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below and watch that partner ingredient analysis video. But come on, let's get started. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated water phase and our heated oil phase in two separate heat resistant glass measuring cups. So in this one here, I already have 43.5 grams of distilled water. And to that, I'm going to add 30 grams of vegetable glycerin and five grams of propanadiol 1,3. For our oil phase, you'll need four grams of polo wax, four grams refined shea butter, three grams dimethicone 350, and please remember to read the blog post if you're looking for substitutions, and five grams satyryl alcohol. Up next, I'm going to weigh the water phase and make note of that weight, being sure to include that it also includes the spatula. To heat everything through, I'm going to put both phases in a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm going to go put this on the stove top over medium heat for about half an hour until everything has melted through. Once everything has heated through, you can remove your water bath from the heat and then remove your measuring cups from the water bath. Before we continue, we're just going to top up the water phase to that number we wrote down earlier. Up next, grab your immersion blender and start blending. So we're gonna to wanna to do a few quick pulses before we work up to a full blend so we don't spray lotion everywhere. Okay, so that was about three minutes of blending. This is still really quite hot and as you can see, very liquidy. So we are going to leave this to cool for a while and then come back and blend it some more. It's been about five minutes. You can see starting to get a little bit of thickness on the top and also a little bit of separating. So let us give this some more blending. All right, so that was only about another 90 seconds of blending, but you can see that this is getting so thick that it's not really uh, blending around very easily uh, anymore. So I'm going to scoop out the immersion blender here and, and be careful of the blade there. You know, you don't want to slice up your beloved spatula. How gorgeous is that? It's also still pretty dang warm. So we're gonna leave this to continue to cool, but while we do that, we can weigh out our cool down phase. There are just two ingredients in our cool down phase. So we are using Optifin Plus as our preservative and we're going to need one and a half grams of that. And we'll need four grams of niacinamide, also known as vitamin B3. Once the lotion has cooled down, we can incorporate our cool down phase. So I'm gonna add a scoop of the lotion to the cool down phase whisk to combine and then transfer it back to the parent batch. Now the last thing we're going to do is check the pH of the lotion. 
Uh, we want it to be sort of just shy of six for both the niacinamide and the optifin. So in this little dish, I have 18 grams of distilled water, and to that I'm going to add two grams of lotion to create a 10% dilution. Have our pH meter here, and it's living in its storage solution. Give that a rinse off in some distilled water in a clean beaker, and then turn it on and check away. It helps to tilt the dish a little bit to ensure you are fully submerging the pH meter's uh, reader bulb. Okay, and we got our smiley face around the 5.5 uh, line, so that's great. Just rinsing this off so we can put it away and we're ready to package our lotion. As you can see, this is pretty darn thick, uh, so I don't recommend putting it in a pump top container. It won't really pump very well. Uh, so I would recommend using either a jar like this one. This is a plastic screw top jar from Yellow Bee. Uh, they have them in black and white and in a variety of different sizes. Uh, or a soft squeeze tube would also work well. I know Yellow Bee sells them uh, and Les Enfleurs here in Canada also has them. Uh, and they're also pretty awesome. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to show you a couple different versions of this cream that I made. So this is the version, of course, that we just made. This version uh, was one of the first versions that I made using glycerol stearate as the emulsifier, but without uh, any gum in it or a gelling agent. This one uses glycerol stearate and half a percent of Sepamax Zen and this one uses glycerol stearate and half a percent of xanthan gum. So these ones were all made um, back in September, which now is about five months ago. Um, so we have definitely some differences here. Um, so here's the one that we just made. You can see it's quite fine and silky and really, um, I don't know, it's lovely on the skin. Um, Definitely a very smooth looking one. So this one with the, um, without any gum in the glycerol stearate, uh, you can see it's, it's a little rougher in consistency um, and it's held together pretty well, but it's not fully stable. Um, other versions that I've done like this have weeped much more noticeably. This one I blended really, really aggressively uh, and it's still not you know, perfectly uniform or stable. Um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the one with the Sepamax Zen here, you can see it's, it's a much finer consistency than the one uh, that doesn't have any kind of gum or gelling agents in it. it it's much, much more stable. And then here's the one I made with uh, Xanthan gum. So I don't know if this is coming across on camera particularly well, but it's kind of like stringy, kind of fibrous uh, looking compared to the, the one made with the Sepamax Zen. So that's just kind of cool. When it comes to skin feel, I definitely find that I prefer these two versions. So either the Polo Wax version or the Glycerol Stearate SE Plus Sepamax Zen version. And if you'd like to learn more about the versions of this lotion made with Glycerol Stearate SE, make sure you are checking out the blog post, which is linked in the description box below. But yeah, there you go. So we just made a beautiful moisturizing repair cream which is just perfect for dry skin in these cold winter days. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are checking out that blog post, which is linked in the description box below for a whole lot more information. But yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.